the DJI Pocket 2 is a really nice camera. But before we talk about this and we get deep into this, we should give a look at why its predecessor, you can see it over here, if it focuses, maybe you want. Okay, now we have it. Its predecessor, the DJI Osmo Pocket, was such a su successful camera. Now, this little camera introduced the little gimbal camera concept and it did it in a really good way because the video coming out of the uh, DJI Osmo Pocket was uh, really good. I mean, nothing special, nothing spectacular, but it was good for the purpose, which was uh, easy vlogging, uh, people uh, willing to record their, their, their holidays and stuff like that. And you could finally have smooth footage in a pocketable camera, from the name Pocket, it's there for that reason, at a reasonable price and in a very, very easy way. But this camera was not perfect. There were a couple of flaws, not flaws, but design choices that uh, ended up being problems more than uh, uh, good decisions. Especially I'm talking about the field of view, because the field of view was a 26 millimeter equivalent lens, which forced you to stretch your, your, your arm pretty, uh, pretty far away from you to be able to have like your face and some of the background. And this was not as easy. I mean, in the long term, going with your arm stretched was not the most comfortable thing to do. And on, on top of that, the audio coming from this camera was not uh, spectacular in the first place, but it became it, beca it, it was easily becoming unusable as soon as uh, the wind started picking up or there was noise around you. It was just one microphone that wasn't that good. The new camera, though, the uh, DJI Pocket 2, they dropped the Osmo, even though it still shows. Uh, it still shows over here so <laughs> i don't know why anyways they dropped the osmo but the pocket 2 takes what was working in the dji uh, osmo pocket and brings it to the next level by making uh, the camera better especially in those areas where the first one uh, fell fell short i mean the field of view is now a 20 millimeters equivalent which uh, is way, way wider than the 26. And they uh, also added four microphone, one for each side, uh, that served for two purposes. The first one is that um, when you talk, or actually the microphone, the, the, the software inside the camera, makes sure that uh, the primary microphone is the one facing where the the head where the camera is directed to so if your uh if your frame is in front of you the main uh, audio comes from in front of you if you're uh, recording yourself the main audio comes from yourself if you're going sideways it comes from sideways you can use these microphones to uh also have a stereo effect i don't like it i always use mono so i turned it off but the most important thing is that by having four microphones, the artificial intelligence inside the camera has way more information to be able to do stuff such as noise reduction, wind noise reduction, and making sure that the microphones still pick up uh, what you need them to, to pick up. And let me show you a couple of uh, short footages with both cameras that will show you exactly how wide, wider is uh, the field of view and how better is the audio uh, from the two compared to the previous version. Video and audio test with the DJI Pocket 2 versus the DJI Osmo Pocket. You can see the audio right now. It is windy, but it's not super windy. But the difference should be clear between the two. And also you should be able to tell the difference between the field of view and the exposure. They're both set on minus 03 EV. 
but I can clearly tell that the two does a way better job than the one and they're sitting two centimeters uh, one from the other so same scene same exposure same everything but there's a night and day difference as I've seen the difference was pretty pretty visible especially the audio was with wind was completely different and just to let you understand why I'm so excited about the, the Pocket 2 being that good with audio is that at the end of the day, since the first cam, the first iteration of this camera, the Jasma Pocket, wasn't that good at audio, I ended up going around with this. I just had to buy this additional uh, USB-C to 3.5 millimeters adapter and an external microphone together with a small cage to be able to record a decent audio when I, when I, when I was around. As I, as I always say, I often go in the mountain, that's my environment, so wind is always a factor, and a camera that suffers wind is not a camera that I can use easily. That's why I ended up with that uh, huge set setup, which defeats the purpose of having a pocketable camera. Now, on top of that, DJI decided to give us another option which was called, which is called Creator Skit. Now, what do you get with the Creator Skit? Before we get into that, let me tell you that compared to the previous version, we have two nice additions already in the uh, base package, which is the, uh, is, what is it? This joystick which is now included in the price of the basic price you know, of the basic product and this um, tripod mount tripod mount uh, like the, the 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 screw in for the tripod plates uh, which was not an option in the previous one you had to buy third party stuff or accessory um, even from DJI to make sure you could connect it to uh, to a to a tripod but going back to the creator's kit what do you get you get this little tiny tripod if it focuses i'll try to get it focused i can promise okay it does it doesn't want to so you get this mini tripod which is okay it's good but not not a big difference but what you get the most is this one, which is called the do-it-all handle, which serves a lot of purposes. It, when you connect it to the bottom of the, of the camera, let me show you. You just remove the base that you have in the normal kit and you just connect the do-it-all handle. What it does it also makes the camera uh, a taller, but at the same time, it's easier to handle. But the main function of this is that this is gonna serve as a wireless connector to your phone, so you can see what the camera is doing with your phone. It, it has a small uh, microphone, which you can, so we, you can hear the audio coming from your, uh, from your footage, which otherwise you wouldn't be able to do it uh, with a basic package also it allows you to connect with this little jack that you see over here allows you to connect uh, your your earphones uh, to monitor the audio if you want but the most important thing that this thing does is that it connects to what it is called the, the remote the wireless microphone this is a nice addition it's a microphone that you can clip, clip on you. You, you, can, you also receive the, uh, it's that cat. You put it there and you can re record the audio. The only downside of this is that the dead cat comes off too easily in my opinion. But I mean, uh, it is what it is. But this, this microphone, which is again, a wireless microphone that connects it to the, to the um, Duido Lendo also has the option, if you see over here, it's got a little hole and that's a, 
uh, 3.5 millimeters jack, which allows you to use this microphone as a, a remote uh, transmitter while you connect your own microphone. Let's just say you have a lavalier microphone and you prefer that to this. Well, this allows you just to stream it wirelessly to, uh, to your, to your po pocket too. Audio test, internal microphones versus wireless microphone. As of now, I'm recording with the internal microphone and the wind is not too strong. So I don't know if that's a, a, as good as a test as I would have expected to. But as of now, is it again, internal microphone, then I just turned on the wireless microphone and uh, that's it with its uh, that that cat it should help but as of now as I said the wind is not too too strong so maybe it's not a real test and it's super easy to use because you just turn it on it connects it to the handle and it's from from that moment you're recording from this microphone me I don't use it too much because the audio coming from the onboard microphone is already good and this focuses the audio a little bit too much on the uh, on me speaking while usually I want the ambient to be present but this is not the last uh, um, the last accessory that you get in the creators kit one of the accessories is really important and is this one over here let me show you you just slap it on it and it goes from 20 millimeters equivalent to a 15 millimeters equivalent. So if you if you compare it to the older version, there were third-party accessories and there were magnetics as well as this one, but you were going from 26 to slightly less. This brings you to 15 millimeters equivalent. The only downside that I see is that being a mag magnetic, it comes off a little bit too easily for what I like. I almost lost it a couple of times, which I didn't like at all. <laughs> but it is what it is. I mean, stuff can be done better in the third iteration of this camera. The most important uh, specs of this camera are for the majority shared with uh, the, with the previous one it's a 4k uh, 60 fps camera uh, capable of uh, slow motion uh, time lapse hyperlapse motion lapse all of these good stuff that you can do especially when you have uh, a gimbal and all of these uh, were translated from the previous camera to to this camera so we don't have a huge amount of additional uh, functions. The only additional stuff that you have is the HDR, and we'll talk about it later. And the option, I guess, the option only the option to lock the gimbal, which is you're seeing it now. It's uh, it's a nice thing. Some sometimes it allows you to have good shots out of it. Uh, but other than that, you don't have that many functionalities. Uh, in general, there these are all the the the, the Oh, I, I forgot the face, the face tracking, which was already part, part of the previous one. But yeah, in general, it does the same thing that the previous one was doing, but it just does it a little bit better. From a construction standpoint, the concept is the same. The construction is pretty much the same. It's plastic. But the design is a little bit different when it comes to the optics as i said it's wider but it's also brighter from f2 to f1.8 but the sensor is even is also bigger it's got a 16 megapixel sensor which is bigger than the previous one and uh, not only that they also changed the microphones as as we said but they also uh, added uh, a few things one the strap is finally connected to the camera instead of being connected to the uh, to the case, which didn't make any sense in the previous one. In fact, I've never used it. But they also add uh, oh, and they uh, they uh, added the, the joystick, which 
is a real joystick compared to the uh, scrolling wheel that you had in the previous one and this one is included in the basic version they added this button over here which was not present in the previous one and this one turns off the camera but it also turns on the camera but it's not the only button that turns the camera on we now, now we have two buttons the this one over here which is pretty much the same of the previous version and this one on the side if i turn it on with this it goes into selfie mode immediately but if i use the other one assuming i can push it it turns on directly in front of me so what it does is since i when when it's turned off you you already know what you want to what, what what it is that you want to uh record so it makes it makes your life easier when you turn it on already being in the position that you need so again little addition here and there that makes this this camera uh, better than the predecessor as i told you there's uh the construction was in general is better than the predecessor but there's two things that i don't like the first one is the case if you see the difference between the two the one on the on the previous model has a flap that you just do this you open the flap and the camera easily falls on your falls on your hand super easy to do no hassle at all but this camera though there's no as you can see there's no there's no flap so in theory it should be easier to take it out and i guess this was their idea but the thing is it's so freaking exactly that's the second thing it's so freaking uh hard to do that it's not easy to take the camera out and i hate it like hate it the other thing i guess you heard a noise well what exactly what happened is that this case has magnetic uh cases for getting the the like the uh, additional the wide angle adapter on on this camera but it's magnetic and since you have to force it out every time i do it i risk to lose this because it just falls i guess the magnet is not so strong or the design is not that good in general and so i hate this too i hate the case the case could have been done better i would love the previous version a lot i love the previous version a lot more but again that's the only thing that i can that i can complain about the construction in general speaking of image quality uh the camera pretty much has the same qualities as of the previous one but better um, what do i mean with better uh the video coming out of the camera the previous one was already decent this one is better because it's got better dynamic range and it's got a more three-dimensional um look to it this is due to the wide angle to the wider aperture of the lens together with the wider with the bigger sensor it gives you that three-dimensional a little bit more three-dimensionality to 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 what you're filming um and finally it's getting usable in low light uh, the previous version was barely usable i mean uh, as soon as the sun was going down you could just forget to record well this one is usable up to 1600 iso but still you can push it to 3200 and even 6400 if you need they're not going to be perfect but they're going to be somehow usable depending on what it is that, you, that, that you're filming and this is a huge addition because when you're out during like holidays and all of that having the possibility to use the same camera to film even during the night it's a whole different game compared to using like your phone or your main camera or other stuff it's it makes your life a lot a lot easier so image quality wise it would a huge leap forward honestly uh, it may not be as visible during day daylight but in low light it's way 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 better uh, it's kind of also a better exposure management uh, which i do like a lot more than the, than the previous one
Speaking of human quality, they did something weird. They called, uh, they have two modes, uh, which is related to quality. High quality and battery saver mode. Now, a normal person, what would, what would expect? The battery saver mode saves battery and kills a little bit the quality, while the high quality kills the battery, but it gives you the, the, be the better quality. Well, no, I was going crazy about it for weeks because I couldn't tell what was going on. And I had to dig into the forums to understand. What they call high quality, it only the, applies noise reduction to the footage. So what you end, what you end up having is uh, uh, cleaner looking if at the first glance video, but where details are gone forever. Uh, while the battery saver mode doesn't do all of that or it does it in a lower uh, with lower settings and at the end of the day you get a better video quality coming out of the battery saver than compared to the high quality on top of that there's no battery saving by using the battery saver the battery goes the same way so it, it lasts the same amount of time i tested for Trying to understand <laughs> what this thing was doing, I tested that a lot and I couldn't get substantial differences between the two modes. So, to sum it up, use battery saver. It basically, it gives you the best footage, even though high quality may let you think that you get a better footage from high quality. It's not like that. It's stupid. I know. I don't know why they did it like that. Just call it, I don't know, noise reduction on and noise reduction off. It would make a lot more sense, people wouldn't get confused, and it would make everybody happy. Speaking of image quality, there's two things that we need to you still need to talk. It's slow motion and HDR. The slow motion is 120 frames per second and 240 frames per second without our audio, only in 1080p with uh, a crop. You gotta Keep that in mind. So it's cropped, it's only 10, 1080p, and the image quality, while in 1080p normal is a good image quality, it starts falling apart at 120 frames per second and it gets very worse at 240 frames per second. You, you're seeing it right now. I hope the detail can show you what I'm what I'm what I'm talking about. When it comes to HDR, actually going back to uh, the slow motion. They call it 4, 4x and 8x to uh, uh, the two modes. Well, while 4x for them is uh, 120 fps and 8x is 240 fps. They are assuming you're shooting at 30 frames per second. It would have been smarter to call it 120 fps and 240, but they call it four four times and eight times uh, slow mo. Again, as long as you know it, if you're shooting 24 fps the 120 is 5 times and the 240 is 10 times lower. Just so you know it. Not a big of a difference, but you just need to know it. It's a naming issue. I don't know why they do it like that. While we speak about, uh, while we talk about HDR though, the situation gets worse. They added it with huge uh, emphasis in a uh, firmware update in, in January 2021. And I would have expected it to be usable, but in my opinion, it's unusable. Like, it's barely unusable. The detail is completely gone. It's in, it looks really bad. Uh, on top of that, the exposure is way off. It, it turns off uh, the face tracking, so you cannot HDR yourself while you're, while, you're, while you're talking. And funny enough, if you turn the HDR off, face tracking doesn't come on it on its own. You just need to turn the camera off and on again to let to let it work. Don't ask me why, but it is like this. So I would just not count on the HDR for this camera. Speaking of autofocus, in general the autofocus is really good, but I found out that when we, we when you have a backside illuminated uh, scene uh, like you're seeing right now, it easily loses uh, the focus on the on the face tracking. So it gets confused by the flare and the light coming from one side or from behind you. That's annoying because you would expect that to be sticking on you uh, way better. 
but it, it only happens when there's a lot of light coming in, leaking into uh, the frame from one of the sides or from behind you. But it's important for you to know. Other than that, the focus is good. The other focus is good. It focuses uh, even really close, so you can also do nice close-ups. Even though, since it's a really lightweight camera, it's not easy to be super steady when you're that close. But that's, I mean, your mileage may may vary than that. So the stabilization for this camera is really good. I found out that it's a little bit better than the, pre the, 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 the previous one, and I guess the wider lens helps on that. Weirdly enough, for this camera and the previous one, I realized that it stabilizes a lot better while you're running, as you've seen, you're seeing right now, than uh, while you're uh, slowly walking. You, while you walk, you can still see that little bit of up and down, as you're seeing right now, not huge, it's not super distracting, but you can see it. While when you're running, it's almost perfect. Don't, don't ask me why it's like that, but it is. That's, that's, that's what I noticed through several, several, several tests that I've, that I've done. In general, though, the stabilization is really good and I can't complain. The gimbal lock is a nice addition because it allows you to do more creative stuff. And what else? Um, let me just have a look at my tablet. I, I do have uh, a lot of stuff written because it's a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, yeah, the, you have different uh, modes of stabilization. You have the follow mode, which can be slow or fast. You have, when you follow mode, it's just following what you do, but slowly or faster, depending on the setting. Uh, but it's it tends to be smooth. There's FPV, where it just basically doesn't stabilize almost at all. It just follows what you do really fast. Uh, I don't know why you would use the, this mode. I haven't used it that much, but it's there. Uh, and what else? Yeah, gimbal lock. And ah, one thing that I forgot. Uh, I realized that, and you're seeing it right now, when you're very close to, uh, to the camera and you're uh, filming yourself with face tracking, the face tracking tends to be a little bit jerky. It goes back and forth like too much. It kind of overreacts. So you see that it goes... Uh, all over the place while you would expect it to be a little bit smoother. Again, not a big deal. You just need to stay a little bit far away from, from the camera, which you still need uh, because you just want some background. So it's not a big deal, but it's worth being noticed. I needed to tell you because I ended up uh, realizing that I had this issue already. Uh, and for the stabilization, I guess that's it. Speaking about the battery, this is the last technical thing. The battery lasts approximately an hour and 20 minutes of record time continues. It's not a great battery life, but the, the device is super small and it's got a gimbal. It does a lot of stuff, so it's understandable. It's not perfect. Uh, I need to, when, whenever I'm out doing hiking and stuff like that, I need to uh, make sure that I have my... Um, power bank which I always bring with me anyways and whenever I'm not using the camera if I can I tend to use it a little bit just to make sure that it lasts me throughout the day that's the only downside that I that I that I see and I also realized that using the external microphone and the do it all handle doesn't kill the battery too much it doesn't affect the overall uh, duration of the of the of the battery too much as well as the 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 uh, the settings 4k or 1080p the difference is not too much uh, so that's not a if you're worried about battery you don't just need to drop the quality because of the battery that's not that much of a difference in conclusion i really love this camera there's a few things that i would have done better i hate the case like i hate it i despise it and i don't know why they went like that but it is what it is uh, and I hate the fact that the magnetic stuff easily falls, um, it falls too easily. It, I hate it. I don't want to lose stuff because it falls. It's supposed to be there and stay there. But with 
that that being said, I like the camera a lot, and I can uh, I can recommend it to pretty much everybody because it does what it's supposed to do. It follows you. It allows you to experiment with a nice smooth footage. It can follow you while you're vlogging. It can help you while you're doing your panels. It does a lot of good stuff. And it does it right. The image quality had a nice bump compared to the predecessor. And there's nothing wrong with this with this camera. Yes, it loses face tracking when it's back when there's backlight or it becomes a little bit jerky if you're too close. But other than that, this camera does what it's supposed to do and it does it well. So to me, is uh, it's recommended. And I would also recommend to buy the 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 creator's kit because you may not be interested in all of the stuff uh, that it's part of the package but bits here and there are gonna be useful uh, throughout your your use of the camera so by all means if you buy it i'd rather take it with the creator's kit than not well i think that's it i told you pretty much everything and i told you maybe too much if you stick to this uh if you stick to this video this far thank you i really appreciate it uh, let me know what you think about the video down below let me leave me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and comment again comment down below i i want to hear your feedback on this and if you didn't like the video or if you don't like the camera just let me know down here let, let's just talk about this it's to me it's a great camera and does what it's supposed to do one last thing people compare to to uh, smartphones it's not the same thing for as good as a smartphone can be stabilized, it's not a gimbal. So the comparison, even though some some smartphone may be a little bit better when it, when it comes to video quality, but what this camera can do, it's not what a smartphone can do. So to me, it's a comparison that doesn't make any sense. That being said, I guess that's it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.